Michael was collected by Peter as Victor had told him he would be. He was led down the hallway back to the lower level of the estate to an intricate doorway with demons carved into the left side and angels carved into the right. Peter, who was dressed in a crimson-colored satin cloak, motioned for Michael to walk through the door. It led to a winding staircase that descended underground. The air began to smell of earth and mold. The staircase seemed to go on forever, leading them deeper and deeper underground. The stonework changed into solid limestone as torches lit the path. How long does this go on? Michael asked Peter. What way, sir? Mr. Hamilton, I'm happy that Mr. Manamal asked you to join our family, Peter said in response. Are you a vampire as well, then? asked Michael. Yes, sir, Peter said with a proud tone. Been going on 70 years now. It really is a wondrous thing, Mr. Hamilton. The world looks clearer, everything is vibrant, and we are strong. I wasn't so strong in life. Mr. Manamont saved me from polio. I was bedridden and crippled by it when he came to me. He gave me a life I never could have had. So you like Victor then? He's good to you all? Oh yes. He's very kind to each of us and treats us all with respect regardless of the service we provide for him. The ceremony will seem frightening, I must warn you Mr. Hamilton, but don't you worry sir. Everything will be just fine. You can trust Mr. Manamont, answered Peter. Thank you, Peter, Michael said as they continued on. The air grew colder and colder as they traveled further under the estate. Echoes reverberated throughout the stairwell with each descending footstep until finally it opened up to a short hallway. I'm going to have to ask you to take off your clothes and put this on, sir, Peter said as he motioned to a black robe that hung on the wall. It's all part of the ceremony, I hope you understand. It's no problem, Michael said, giving Peter a little grin and a wink, which made him blush and quickly turn around. I'll give you some privacy then, sir, Peter awkwardly said. Peter, I was just joking with you, Michael said with a chuckle. Well, I'll give you some privacy all the same, sir, Peter said and walked towards a doorway with his back to Michael. Michael stripped off his suit and donned the robe. He then joined Peter at the end of the hallway. It opened up into a massive underground catacomb. It was all carved from solid limestone and had ornate sconces holding torches every ten feet illuminating the room. There were about thirty other people dressed in crimson robes the same as Peter. Some he recognized, some he did not. Standing in the center in front of a large carved altar in the middle of the room between two large candelabras stood Victor. He was wearing a white silken robe and a large smile spread across his lips as he seen Michael come into view. Ah, here is our guest of honor. Come, Michael, join me in the center here. Victor called out to Michael, his voice echoing through the great catacomb he stood in. Michael nodded and walked towards the center altar, where Victor bowed to him and beckoned for him to sit upon the beautifully crafted altar, the same carvings portraying the demons and angels as the door in similar fashion with them joining in the middle as a man standing naked, arms upstretched as if to hold up the altar itself. Please, lay down on the altar, Michael, and I shall begin the ceremony. Victor said with a friendly smile, and Michael did so. Michael felt a sting of nervousness set over him. He was about to become a vampire, immortal. He was about to die and be reborn. For a split second, he wanted to run. He wanted to change his mind, but he buried those thoughts as Victor began to speak. Everyone, we have gathered here to bring Michael Hamilton into our family. To join us in eternity, I will become one with him and he with me, as I have with all of you before him. Let us begin. Victor said to the group of people that encircled him. They all started chanting in a strange language that Michael couldn't understand as they moved a few steps inward, tightening the circle. Victor then bent over Michael, gently kissed his forehead and whispered, You may close your eyes if you wish. Michael did not close his eyes. No, he watched as Victor changed. His eyes began to glow a dangerous red color and his face started to contort slightly. He stood with his mouth agape as his teeth began to deform and grow until they formed what looked like a dog's fangs. Every tooth came to a sharp point with the incisors being slightly larger than the others. The inside of his mouth changed to a dark mix of black and red. He was a frightening sight to behold. 
His long, straight blonde hair began to flow around his head as if a wind had picked up in the deep catacombs they were in. There was an eminence of evil around him, almost like a thick black smoke flowing out of his body from every pore and dancing around him. The chanting continued and seemed to consume Michael as it bounced off the walls of the Great Hall. Michael was scared. He found himself shaking uncontrollably, staring at the visage of Victor that stood before him. Was this ball? Was this the real Victor? But he still wanted this. Now you will join me for all time. A voice burst from Victor. It didn't sound like Victor. It was an evil, deep, growling voice that emanated from all of Victor. Victor then pounced onto Michael and sank his predatory fangs into Michael's shoulder. Michael screamed in pain and wrapped his arms around Victor. The pain was deep and he could feel his blood being drained from his body as he tried to instinctively push against the demon on top of him. Victor did not budge. Victor then pulled himself up from Michael, releasing the grip his fangs had upon him. Blood covered his face flowing down his chin and soaking into the white robes he had on. His eyes burned with a fury and brightness that lit up the room around the altar. Michael lay there, shaking from the pain as Victor began to let out a low growl, almost rumble, deep from his lungs. A black smoke, thick and dark like tar, began to pour from his mouth as he bent forward, holding open Michael's mouth with solid, clawed hands. The smoke began to surge from Victor's maw, seemingly with an intelligence and life of its own, and forced its way into Michael, into his mouth and into him. His mouth and wound both were filled with the smoke that tasted like mold and death. It smelled of sulfur as it forced its way into his nostrils. Then came the searing pain, burning every cell in his body, moving downward as the smoke filled him. It felt like a mix between ice and flames, like when you touch metal in sub-zero degree weather. He could feel every part of his body moving and changing, screaming in agony as it took over his lungs, heart, liver, and then brain. As he felt his brain going cold, he heard a voice vibrate through his dying body. It was the same demonic voice he heard come from Victor. I am part of you now, mortal, and you are part of me. It is done. You belong to me now. It said. Michael finally heard his own screams for the first time, deafening in the room around him. He lay convulsing and twitching from the pain as he felt his body growing cold with the change he was enduring and the death that was coming. He vaguely saw Victor collapse off of him, panting heavily before everything went black and he faded from this life. The existence he had known.